No. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Okay. We're all set. Okay. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Pontiac uh, Planning Commission. Uh, our February first, two thousand and twenty-three meeting. I'm going to call this meeting to order. Okay, and we're going to start off with a roll call. Commissioner Henley. Present. Chairman Northcross. Vice Chair, Acting Chairman Northcross. <laughs> Present. Commissioner Shepard. Present. Commissioner McGinnis. Present. Commissioner Duvall. Commissioner Duvall, Commissioner Johnson, and Commissioner De, uh, Parlov have expressed that they are unable to make it tonight for various reasons to staff, and they've asked to be excused. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any official communications? Uh, we have no official communications. Okay. Uh, let's review the agenda. Do we, do we have any amendments to the agenda? None? Hearing none? I'll ask for a motion to approve the agenda. Motion to approve the agenda. Support. Okay. Any questions? No questions? Any questions? Okay. Hearing no questions, uh, we'll call for a vote. Commissioner Shepard? Yes to approve. Commissioner Northcross? Yes to approve. Commissioner Henley? Yes to approve. Commissioner McGinnis? Yes to approve. Okay. okay. We move next to special presentations. There are no special presentations this evening. Okay. Well, we'll now move to our public hearing. And what we're going to do, how we're going to run our public hearings this evening, we'll, um, we'll open our first public hearing will be the application ZMA 22-011. This is a application for rezoning at 46156 Woodward Avenue. And we'll have the presentation uh, of the application and, and pertinent information made by the staff. Um, we'll have any questions. We'll entertain questions from our, our uh, council people, any information that the applicant may want to make. And then we'll open that up for a public hearing after those items. And with the public hearing, well, we'll go through the public hearing once we get there. Mm -hmm in terms of the ground rules for the public hearing. But with that, let me uh, open that up with a presentation on item number seven. Uh, this again is for 46156 Woodward Avenue, a re request for rezoning. And we'll take a presentation from our staff. And Chair, if I could advertise to the members of the public that are here, the uh, public hearing format is listed on page two of the agenda. The agendas are at the back of the room if you uh, don't have one, so. Thank you. Um, this is a um, zoning map amendment this evening, also known as a rezoning. It is for case ZMA 220011, which is again 45156 Woodward Avenue. The applicant is James Pappas of Fusco, Schaefer, and Pappas on behalf of uh, Lighthouse Ministries. And, and the proposed use is for multiple uses through the Lighthouse Master Plan. Um, I just want to note this is a, a master plan Lighthouse is putting on their own. This is not something that is approved necessarily as a master plan through the city. I just want to differentiate that. This uh, request is to rezone to allow different uses for future site planning processes for the proposed expansion of the Lighthouse Campus. Um, at 45156 Woodward Avenue. So um, just a brief timeline on the screen. Uh, there was an informational session held with Planning Commission on December 5th with the applicant. Um, it was part of a public meeting, but no decisions were made as part of that. Uh, feedback was received. Um, tonight's is a public hearing. There will be a city council approval needed for this rezoning at a later date. Um, and then uh, the applicant will also have to go through a site planning process through Planning Commission in the future. At this time, there is no applications uh, that have been submitted to the city. So tonight's rezoning involves the following uh, parcel numbers that are listed on the screen. I'm not going to list every one, uh, but there are essentially two sets of rezonings with this application. Uh, the first are the properties, and I have a map on a subsequent page here, but the properties that are currently zoned C0 are um, requested to be rezoned C1. 
And then the properties at the bottom that are listed at R1 are, 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 are requested to be rezoned to C0. So um, with that said, this is the identification of the um, subject parcels that are part of this rezoning up on the screen. Uh, and then the surrounding land uses. You have um, R1 to the eastern side of this property along Cottage and Park Place and some of the similar streets. But along Woodward, which is on the west end, west side of this image, uh, there's a lot of transitional zoning and, and from anywhere from R3 to C0 to C2 for the uh, start of the um, a downtown uh, mixed-use district. So um, I did want to show what was provided as a campus plan. Uh, this is only for reference. Uh, tonight's approval or consideration is not for this spe any specific use or any site planning. Um, but I just wanted to highlight that on the um, left side of the screen is, uh, is, is the C1 where there is a, um, a small grocery store that is planned. And then there are community service uses on the right side of the screen and additional residential facilities um, that are proposed along Cottage Street, as you can see there. Um, as part of this, Hovey, and, and what does apply to this rezoning is part of Hovey Street, um, this is proposed to be vacated. That is a future approval uh, by Planning Commission and City Council, but that is part of the request uh, that begins this evening. So um, again, this is just a reference site plan. This has not gone through any approval process, uh, but just gives an outline of what um, Lighthouse is looking to do for the site. So uh, when reviewing a rezoning, there are 10 standards that um, Planning Commission can consider. I'm just going to highlight some of these. Uh, I'm not going to go through each of these, but it's really to make sure it's consistent with the goals and policies of the master plan, uh, which the city approved in, in 2014. It's compatible with the site's physical, geological, hydrological, and environmental features. Um, you know, the evidence the applicant cannot receive a reasonable return on investment through developing the property with one or more uses permitted under the current zoning. Compatibility with the potential uses allowed in proposed zoning district with surrounding uses and zoning in terms of land suitability, impacts on the environment, et cetera. Uh, the capacity of city utilities and services sufficient to accommodate the uses permitted in the requested district without com compromising the health and safety and welfare of the city. Uh, continuing on at number F, it's the capability of the street system to safely and efficiently accommodate the expected traffic generated by the uses. G, the, ba the boundary of the requested rezoning district is reasonable for relationship to the surroundings and construction on the site to meet the dimensional regulations for the requested zoning district. H, if a rezoning is appropriate, the zoning district is considered to be more appropriate from the city's perspective than another zoning district. I, uh, if the request is for a specific use, rezoning of the land is considered to be more appropriate. Um, this, um, uh, while this is not a conditional rezoning, um, Planning Commission may consider I, but it may not apply as much as a conditional rezoning. And then number J, the requested rezoning will not create isolated or incompatible zone in the neighborhood. So um, with that, um, there's more detail within the staff report, but the staff findings are that the city's 2014 master plan designates the west side of the proposed campus as an office, hospital, healthcare district, and the east side of the campus as a traditional neighborhood residential district. Both future land use categories in the master plan encourage flexibility. They would permit offices, residents, and neighborhood institutions where proposed, which is similar to what Lighthouse is looking for this site. The applicant will need to apply for a site plan for this project in the future, which would be contingent on this rezoning uh, for the subject properties being approved. So with that, staff's recommendation this evening is approval of the proposed zoning amendment. And as a review, Planning Commission is making a recommendation to City Council, who is the policy body for modifications to the city zoning code. So that is my presentation this evening. I'd be happy to entertain any questions you may have. And the applicant is in the audience. Thank you. I'm going to start to my left. Are there any questions? Or? First, a sidebar, I love your sweater tonight, uh, <laughs> Acting Chair North Cross. The <clears throat> applicant has done a prior presentation to this planning commission to staff. Was that a initial site plan review, or was that a sort of special presentation allowing this preliminary? It felt it was very helpful. Yep. We, we already are conversant and familiar, many of us, with this 
this project and it's helped set the stage for where we are now. But I just want to confirm, was that sort of an informal presentation? It was absolutely an informal presentation. And, you know, we're going to see more of these. I would say that that discussion was more, uh, while it discussed both the rezoning and the site plan, I think it was to resolve any feedback that may affect either case going forward. Um, a rezoning it makes sense to go forward to planning commission first, and, and the applicant's chosen to hold off on the site plan until they can get engineering drawings. So we hope to see that here, here soon. So. And then ultimately, with that process concluded, the site plan review would come through this planning commission again? Is that, that, is, that is correct. This yep. rises to that, okay. And um, is there anything substantially different than from the informal presentation you'd like to flag for us beyond no. what you've already shared? Um, I would not. I think the applicant can address this a little more. They did make a resubmission after that presentation. Uh, I think there were some very small changes, but I would prefer to have the applicant discuss those. So, And to the city's master plan, which we uh, look forward to uh, refreshing, Yeah. Uh, would is it your uh, professional assessment that at least in terms of the traditional or the pre-existing master plan that this is harmonious and compatible? You spoke to that, but I just want to... Yeah emphasize and put a mm -hmm. underline on that. Absolutely. Th this definitely aligns with the master plan, particularly with the proximity to Woodward. And uh, this rezoning request is still giving a transitional, more intense zoning on Woodward and, and transitioning to a lighter um, zoning district with the C0 before moving on to the, the single family residential. So um, this is definitely um, supported by staff and, and professionally aligns with that master plan. So obviously the state of Michigan requires uh, with the zoning uh, and enabling acts, et cetera, that uh, this public hearing happen at the planning commission level. Yep. Um, are we required to do a formal vote of recommendation as a planning commission to allow it to then move on to ultimately city council consideration? That is correct. Yes. Okay. And so the expectation from staff is that we'll, we'll consider that action tonight. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I think that concludes my questions as it relates to staff. I don't think I have, I mean, they did a great job presenting last time, so I think a lot of my questions were already answered. Um, I think it'll be nice if, if there's neighbors here to hear the comments. Um, but everything I saw was excellent, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it at that for now. Uh, no questions for staff, although I wasn't here for the original review, so I will probably have some questions for the applicant. And having sat through the uh, prior um, review and looking at the items here, uh, right now I don't have any additional questions. Um, I'd like to ask the applicant if you'd like to ha make some comments or point out some things. Uh, I think there is a question about how much does this differ from the previous presentations we've had. So would the applicant come forward? And, yeah, mm -hmm. and as you do, there's at the base of the microphone, you'll want to push the button to the right. And the red light will come on. It is activated. Thank you. Okay. Good evening. I'm Todd Burke. I'm the Chief Real Estate Development Officer at Lighthouse. I uh, appreciate your time this evening. Uh, Steve Rofi uh, with Fusco, Schaefer, and Pappas, our architectural firm, is representing us this evening. Jim was unable to make it. So he's going to speak a little bit to some of those changes that were made and just kind of answer any questions and recap it for you at this time. Hi, I'm uh, Steve Rofi, Fusco, Schaefer, Pappas, Architects, uh, 550 East Nine Mile Road, Ferndale, Michigan. Um, the uh, latest site plan that was submitted just had a bit of uh, notation, additional notation as to what is as is and what is trying to clarify what is as is and what is new. Um, some of the, and I got a pointer, I hope it works. Uh, this is the existing uh, lighthouse headquarters building. The uh, tenants that are in there now, the wellness center and the CEO group um, are going to be staying. Uh, we are looking at just a, a reuse of this portion of the first floor and Lighthouse will be um, staying with their uh, second floor uh, office and multi-use space. So that part has not changed. Um, 
we've, um, again, I think we've just added some notes um, addressing some of the as is conditions such as parking. We're, we are maintaining um, the existing parking on the west end of the parcel. We are maintaining the fam what we're calling family housing and daycare center will stay. Uh, the rest of the uh, development will be new, uh, new buildings on each side of the, the family um, housing. And then we'll have, uh, as uh, Mark had mentioned, the, the new supermarket, social supermarket on the one end of the headquarters. And then new parking that will be provided for that building as well as, um, oh, it's going, there we go. Um, as well as additional parking for use of, of the headquarters office. This is a, essentially office space and some medical office. And then all new parking that will uh, provide uh, for this east uh, housing half of the site. Um, we are currently looking, we, we did just receive the survey information from our uh, surveyor and so we're starting to take a look at some of the recommendations that were made at the last meeting, um, particularly for fire department access. We are looking at uh, trying to get larger turning radiuses. We're probably gonna be pulling this drive a bit closer to Woodward in order to, to do that and accomplish that. And then we've also looked at consolidating some of our buildings so that uh, the flow of traffic could, could happen much um, much easier around the buildings. Um, and then we're also looking at uh, the flow of pedestrian traffic through the site. We're, we're trying to maintain a link from all buildings to all other buildings, uh, as this will be a, a full campus. So we have uh, basically existing walks that occur on the south and west side, and then we're going to continue that across the front and then up to the right of way and into what would be the east half, which will have its own walk network. So some of that was fine tuned a bit um, after the last meeting, but essentially it's the same plan. Um, the intent is again to uh, consolidate the entire campus and that, um, that is, is the goal at this point, over, overarching goal. other questions? Uh, I do have a question. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, so I guess my main question relates to the standards of approval item D, whether it's compatible with its surrounding uses. Um, this, I mean, if it works as intended, this should be a, a pretty significant increase in traffic to the surrounding area. And I'm concerned about the adverse effects to the single family housing directly adjacent to this site. Um, and I know this is rezoning, this isn't a site plan review. Uh, but I hope you could address how you intend to uh, adequately screen the area, if there will be a traffic impact study performed. How you okay. Um, yes, I mean, essentially, uh, a lot of the functions on the site are basically uh, in place and being, re being replaced. For instance, the, uh, the headquarters office building will all pretty much function as it was. The only real addition is going to be the social supermarket um, that will be done in conjunction with uh, what would be a, the service center function. That is happening to a small degree on site already. So basically it's an expansion of the use that's occurring on site on, on that west side. On the east side, there is an existing building here that functions as uh, a housing opportunity um, center. It is much smaller um, and has its own dining facility uh, that, that works in conjunction with the family uh, housing. Uh, we are expanding that. So it's basically the same and or very similar use we're, we're expanding to, to allow for um, more clients on campus. Most of these clients or many of them will not have vehicles. Um, many of them will be ambulatory or come with public transportation, essentially. Um, the, the parking that's being provided is mostly for staff. 
and for visiting professionals, um, we'll have um, people coming on site on and off uh, through the week. Uh, the the truck access this will be this will occur possibly the largest truck maybe a couple times a year uh, is our understanding. Uh, essentially, it'll be small uh, van delivery van type type of vehicles that'll be coming in. Um, and those do come on site not as it is now, but not to the extent that they will with, uh, obviously, with the supermarket. Uh, we will have a specific parking for the supermarket uh, visitors or the clients, and uh, that will be you know, basically right off of Cottage. Cottage Street will be kind of our main access into the site uh, with access to the office here directly. Um, truck access off of the cottage, and then what would be parking uh, for what was hubby will become now just a, uh, an aisle with parking attached, and then a service uh, core that will house our uh, trash and loading area for this building. Uh, the trash and loading obviously will be here for the um, existing West building as well as the new supermarket. So essentially, it's the same uses, just expanded. Thank you. <coughs> Everyone's good? I have questions. Oh, yes. For the applicant, what would be the projected time frame in which resident nearby neighbors and residents should expect uh, construction if your timeline works ideally? And even if you can't give us the start and stop time, are we talking nine months? Are we talking? Three months. What what should the surrounding vicinity um, expect for the bulk of the the uh, transition? Sure. If everything moves along as we hope it will, um, construction would start in probably early 2024, and take nine to 12 months. Hopefully, finishing up in that first quarter of 2025. Thank you. And to the question of the zoning. Um, perspective, how long has Lighthouse been at this site? I've been there a year and a half, but back in the 90s. So at least a year and I, a half. Yeah, I volunteered <laughs> there. So it's um, my estimation is about 26 years with the new site there that they had built. When I was in college, I worked there in 2003 with the AmeriCorps National Service Program, so definitely nearly 20 years yeah. for the primary building. Um, and I'm curious if you or anyone in the organization that's with you this evening is familiar with essentially the, the residential parcels that Lighthouse controls um, that, that's more to the back of this site in question. Are we talking about the last five years Lighthouse has been active with this, 15 years? Um, as long as, as much as you can know, because it gives us perspective about when we're updating the zoning, what's sort of been like the, the practical use and application of it already so far? Director of Housing and Community Development with Lighthouse. So those homes currently were um, a piece of our transitional housing program. That was an on-site housing program. We've recently changed that to a scattered site model. So the clients who were in those programs would um, would be off-site. So those homes haven't been haven't been in use. Um, what three years? Four years? I was say with with yeah. COVID and the uh, merger of South Hope and Shelter, we have Lighthouse listed in okay. twenty nineteen. So at least for the last three years, it's it's had an evolution of use. But are you familiar, broadly speaking, how many years prior to that they had been lighthouse engaged? Um, I want to say at least ten to fifteen years. Okay. So pretty extensive. And that includes the uh, multi-story uh, uh, apartment building. Correct. That's twenty plus years. Twenty plus years. That's helpful to know. And. With the phases of this project, what would be the expectation of your target for the vacation of Hobie Street? Um, if that could be to staff as well, has that been sort of engaged with when you might want to pursue that with the city? And does this zoning uh, decision have any impact on that? And uh, Commissioner McGinnis, if I may add, this has not been discussed, the timing with the applicant, but if, if there's a 2024 plan, we do have a site plan um, expiration and so we may want to just coordinate what the best time is to get that approval uh, beforehand and I think that that vacation may occur around that same time so but we can coordinate dates on that so 
Anything further you want to offer on the Hobie Street vacation? I mean, it's really uh, as a part of, of, of what we're, we're planning for the site, um, it, it will be an integral part of, of the overall campus um, in such a way that, it, you know, it's providing access to and from. It is uh, providing uh, emergency access as well and uh, additional parking. So it, it will be... Uh, need to be integrated with mm -hmm. the the development of the other portions of the site. I don't know that we've discussed phasing on on the project at this level, yeah. but understood. Thank you. That concludes my questions for the applicant. Okay. With that, I'm about to open up the public hearing, and just to repeat, uh, we're going to allow everyone a three minute limit for their first time at the podium. And after everyone has had their f three minutes, we'll then allow people to return for another three minutes. Now, we're speaking only on uh, this item, which is the rezoning uh, issue. So please keep your questions and comments targeted toward the rezoning issue. And at the end, after everyone's had their, their uh, chance to um, speak on this subject. Uh, I am going to then um, ask for final questions from the commissioners and close the public hearing, and then we are going to deliberate on a recommendation. So having said that, I'm going to open up the public hearing. Please step to the podium, speak into the microphone, state your name, in your address. And for the record, that public hearing opened at 6.35 p.m. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, another chance to speak? Please state your name and your address. To the right. There we go. All right. Carolyn Espinoza, um, I own 46094 Woodward Avenue, which is the properties to the south of the lighthouse that butt up to it. And I had no idea about this plan. So I've come here today to be informed and uh, to see what is going to happen. And whoever's name is on that letter that went out did not return phone calls. That was the other thing, because I called to try to get information. So I just want to be informed. That's all. Thank you. Any other comments? Questions? Regarding the rezoning? And the button can remain on. No one needs to feel yes, the need to turn it yes. off. Yes, And if you can give us your, your name and your address. Uh, Land Travis, 20 West Huron. Uh, this is my first hearing of it as well. And I just have a simple question because um, they indicated that they had a scheduled construction start date. So my question was, have they already acquired a general contractor? And is that contractor a local uh, uh, company for the city of Pontiac? Anyone else? Okay. Okay. Uh, Norm Norman Elam, uh, 45258 Woodward Avenue. Uh, we know Lighthouse, and we've been affiliated with Lighthouse. They have supported us in some of the uh, community activities that we've done. With the expansion and everything like that, I want to know how would that uh, impact the uh, downtown area? Will it have, uh, I know we won't see a negative effect, but how will it positively impact downtown Pontiac? That's my concern. 
Anyone else? Okay, hearing no one else, we are going to attempt to answer the questions. Uh, Mr. Travers, uh, you have a question. Has Lighthouse already acquired a general contractor? Okay. In case the microphone didn't pick that up, okay. Mr. Burke uh, responded, no, they have not. Okay. Thank you. And Mr. Elam's question is, how will this expansion affect downtown? I'm paraphrasing, but hopefully that's correct. And that, okay. that might be a question best for staff if they had any professional um, insight on that. You know, there are two things about this proposal I think staff is supportive of. Number one, um, you know, this, the place the lighthouse is located on Woodward is the, the entrance of the community, the gateway to the community. I, I know that's been discussed uh, with the marijuana ordinance just for Woodward's impact. And so really the fact that there's an investment taking place here is very important. But I think also of importance is the fact that there's a grocery store, uh, a small one at that, but mm -hmm. something that can really help to mitigate, make it easier for people to get food resources in that area is extremely important. I think something the staff is very supportive of. So, um, and, and the fact that their lighthouse is providing um, services to people in need it, it should also be important as well. So, And it, from what has been shared at this initial level, um, it would not uh, likely look materially different for those traveling northbound on Woodward Avenue. Um, it doesn't appear to be uh, any higher or more active use on the the land and property that is most immediately close to, to Woodward Avenue. So there would be additional use and additional um, expansion, but it would not necessarily for the those that are not directly interacting with the, the site and the services it offers, um, that might not be as easily detected. But I think it's uh, a boost and a benefit to that question for the downtown and the community overall that they've committed to Pontiac and that they're remaining here because as they shared, um, previously, they, they cast a wide net. They looked, you know, they have a countywide focus, and I'm, I, I think it's a very positive sign for the downtown that we don't have a large structure, especially as the Woodward sort of loop opens up um, that would then become vacant, dormant, dilapidated. So um, that, would, that would be the worst case alternative, and that's not even on the table, thankfully. Um, but that would, I think, um, hinder further the, the growth and forward momentum of the development of the Woodward Corridor, our downtown, and, and the city as a whole. Mr. Shepard? Okay. No further comments. Mr. Henry? Uh, no further questions. Or comments. I do have one other question. Uh, the interaction with your neighbors, uh, you know, um, I guess you, there's no one on uh, Hovey or Halvey, uh, however that's pronounced, but then the intersecting street where there's that nice wide boulevard. Have you had a chance to discuss with uh, those neighbors your plans? Um, yeah, so that's a great question. So we've had three town hall meetings. In the first one, um, we delivered flyers to people all along um, that first block of Osmond, Park Place, Cottage, Center Street, a few other, other streets locally. Uh, by hand. Um, we had probably 12 or 13 turnout at the first town hall, a uh, slightly larger number at the second town hall, and uh, just this past Saturday, a, a nice turnout here. But I don't know how many of them specifically lived on Park Place, but they did receive the flyer and they did have that opportunity. Good. Thank you. We may need to close the public hearing at this time. Yes. Yes. Okay, with that, we're going to close our public hearing. The time is 6.42 p.m. Great. Thank you. So, gentlemen, um, I think we exhaust all our questions. Any comments, concerns? Uh, chair, for the, the neighbor that, that came here, this is, if Mr. Yendrick wants to recap where this is, this is early in the process. This essentially is updating what the zoning is. And this is a recommendation from this level. 
it would then next go to the Pontiac City Council for at least two readings. Um, so there's multiple more opportunities uh, to offer one's perspective. But this is essentially updating the, if you want to go back to that slide, Mr. Yandrick, that shows what the current zoning is for the land. So it's taking what is right now C0, and that would become C1, and what's R1 would become C0, the lowest, you know, and the least dense and the least intrusive, um, to describe it very broadly. Uh, and so this is the question that is before us today. This does not override or take the place of many other steps that have to come, including the site plan, as Mr. Um, Henley's, Commissioner Henley's questions got to, that there is some, there's going to be a lot of in-the-weeds um, content to make sure that the landscaping, the lighting, the traffic flow, the ingress and egress, that the, all of that is not only conducive to the surrounding vicinity, but also is complying with what the city's requirements are. So this is about saying land use. Would anyone on this land, the applicant is the one that's in question, but would anyone on this land be able to utilize it for what that zoning level allows? So um, that's what the question will be to us. Uh, and I'm, I'm grateful for those that came out tonight to help raise questions that may still be some months off. You know, I'm, I want to know how long is this bad boy going to take? What's this going to mean in terms of disruption for the neighbors? And that's something that will be quite a ways away as we get through uh, the site plan process, which again will come here and will have an opportunity for the, the neighbors and the, the public to, to uh, sound off and, and help shape the finished product. I will um, allow staff at this point, if you want to address, we're required to send notifications to the, those that live within a certain distance away. And so the letter that came, I presume, came from the city of Pontiac and would have had contact information for the city of Pontiac. So if you want to speak to that and how the city recognizes we need to boost our capacity and responsiveness in that office, we have positions posted for that. So if anyone's listening that's a planning professional, um, so that way we can be a lot more um, mm -hmm. proactive and responsive because that's what residents deserve. Do you want to? And I want to thank uh, Ms. Espinoza for those comments. Um, I apologize. Um, I've been working 60, 65 hour weeks. I've been calling people back at 7, 8 p.m. and I apologize. I've not gotten the message. We are um, in the process of interviewing and hiring several planners and our my goal for the planning department is to get that customer response and I'm sorry you did not receive that. So. But we're really grateful that you took yeah. the time to, to flag that and more broadly um, the opportunity for you to find out more um, because you are an important part of our city. You're an important part of this um, stretch of our city as well, and I love your home. <laughs> Nothing further. Just for the record, um, Lighthouse has been, a, I think, a real asset in this community for a number of years. Uh, I know that I've been with some uh, nonprofit organizations that have utilized the lighthouse area, such as the uh, Strong United Neighbors Time Bank. At one time, we were looking for housing, and, and lighthouse was good enough to allow us to use some vacant space. This is well before the uh, pandemic. Uh, and it's good to hear that we're going to have uh, another source for food in, in that area. Uh, hopefully there'll be fresh vegetables and other things, but uh, many of our communities have been described as being food deserts, so the opportunity to have uh, some, some alternatives and things coming in is always very good. So uh, having said that, um, any other comments? Then I'll take a motion Someone would like to try it? Okay. Uh, I make a motion to recommend approval of the zoning map amendment as presented. I second. Okay. Commissioner yes. Yes to approve. Commissioner Shepard. Yes to approve. Commissioner Yes to approve. Commissioner Yes to approve. Okay. Good. And then, Mr. Burke, thank you. Um, we will be sending out a decision letter this week, and I'll just microphone. We will be sending out a decision letter this week um, and also uh, the next step to City Council when that will be timed on the agenda. So, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, our next item is also a public hearing. We're going to move to item uh, 
uh, public hearing 7B, and this is a special exception request for 5060 Woodward Avenue, and the applicant is Randy Yono, M1 Auto Clinic, LLC. And this application number is SEP-22-01. Zero. 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 <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it makes a big difference. Uh, okay. Let me uh, follow the same format. We'll have the staff to offer a presentation. After the presentation, we'll take questions from, the, from our commissioners. Uh, we'll hear from the applicant. And uh, then we'll open up the uh, public hearing. And let me say, on the public hearing, we'll, we're going to hold all the questions until the end so that everyone gets a chance to get in. And uh, often, one question will, will bring rise to another question. We'll hold all the questions to the end, and then we'll answer them after everyone's had a chance to speak. So with that, Good evening again. We have a special exception application before you. It is application SEP 22-010. It is uh, nearby to the last application. It is 50606 Woodward Avenue. The applicant is uh, Randy Yono, and the proposed use is an, uh, the M1 Auto Clinic LLC. The zoning district for this property is C3. The applicant requests to open an auto body shop at 56606 Woodward uh, Avenue. So um, I have a proposed map here. Um, the, uh, the parcel is located on the northwest corner. It's kind of the center of that map of uh, Pike Street, which is going east and west, and Woodward Avenue, which is going north and south. It, the property has been vacant since 2018 when the last permit was issued to Mazza Auto Parts, and that permit was a business license. Because it's been vacant for more than 12 months, the previous use is no longer legally conforming. Uh, the proposed uh, building is 7,505 square feet um, at that northwest corner. So uh, the proposal shows the outline of the property. Now, there really is two sections of this building, and what the applicant's looking for is the shaded section. It's to open an automobile repair shop and collision center, which requires a special exception permit in the zoning district. Again, 7,505 square feet on a total of 17,000 square foot uh, parcel. Um, the applicant uh, addresses in the application that most of the vehicles will be stored inside the building. Um, there are approximately four parking spaces on the north end of the site. So I just have a few photos. Uh, the top photo is from the intersection of Pike and Woodward, uh, looking again from the southeast. Um, and and the uh, looking at that top photo on the left of that, that would be the adjacent use that is not uh, before you this evening um, for this uh, auto body and collision shop. Now, the, the picture on the bottom uh, does show the where the red facade is, uh, the area where most customers would go, the cars would enter the site. Again, this is on Woodward uh, Avenue uh, from the northeast corner. So... Um, I did want to describe uh, for Planning Commission and the public, what is a special exception permit? The, the city is divided into districts within uh, which uses of land and buildings and the, and the bulk and location of the buildings and structures in relation to the land are substantially uniform. However, there are some special exception uses because of their unique circumstances cannot be properly classified as a princi uh, principal permitted use in any particular district or districts without considering in each case the impacts that those uses have upon the surrounding neighborhood. These include public and private uses that are unusual nature, that their operation may give rise to unique problems that, that impact upon neighboring properties and public facilities. So really, this is a review of does this, um, does this land use make sense in this location with what the applicant has proposed? And is there any negative impact to traffic or the surrounding area, to the surrounding neighborhoods? And that's really what's being reviewed in the uh, four standards of approval for a special exception. And, and specifically, I would like to call those out. There is an analysis uh, in the staff report, uh, but the proposed use shall be harmonious with the City of Pontiac Master Plan. The proposed use and appearance of the site shall be harmonious with the existing and intended character of the, and the general vicinity. The proposed use shall not change the essential character of the area or adversely affect the development of the surrounding neighborhood. 
and the proposed use shall not be hazardous or disturbing to existing or future uses in the same general vicinity and will be su a substantial improvement to the community as a whole. So um, I, uh, just very brief, you know, car dealerships and, and auto body shops for that matter are very common in the C3 zoning district and you have this land use uh, along the west side of Woodward adjacent to the railroad properties. You have them along Cesar Chavez. You have them along Walden Boulevard in the city as examples. Uh, this site particularly though is adjacent to downtown the C2 zoning district. Um, but in its conclusion, while the C3 zoning district is typical, this parcel is very small and does not allow for proper access and site circulation. There is some concerns at a staff level that you know this may not be able to handle the traffic, the ingress, the egress, um, just with the nature of the built environment of the site. So uh, with that, um, that is my staff report. Um, staff recommends denial of this application. I'd be happy to entertain any questions that you may have on this item. Um, I'm not sure if anyone's here on behalf of the, yeah, there he is. Um, the applicant is here, um, ready to answer any questions you may have, so. Thank you. Well, I'm gonna start with our commissioners first. Uh, I, I imagine I will have questions. They might come after the um, applicant speaks and after the uh, public has an opportunity to weigh in. Uh, so to staff though, you stated it's been approximately four plus years per city records when it's no, no longer been active. That is correct. But prior to that, it had been Mazza Auto Parts. So it, it was essentially an auto-focused retailer. That is correct. And I seem to recall it before it was orange and black, it was blue and yellow because was it Napa Auto Parts? I believe so, yeah. yep. Um, I'd be curious, and, and perhaps the applicant can illuminate that, even if it's before his time interfacing with the property, what that, that time period was. Obviously, there are uh, buildings and facilities uh, along this stretch of Woodward Avenue that are of this um, wheelhouse, pun intended, and uh, in terms of automotive-focused uh, service or retailer or uh, parts and supplies. Obviously, these sites, these parcels are a challenge for any use because of the grade separation of the, the railroad um, that immediately abuts uh, this property and the real configuration uh, of Woodward Avenue southbound and the many lanes thereof. Uh, I am very receptive to seeing it uh, activated and to seeing it redeveloped um, and to see it have a, a, a useful repurpose. Um, it obviously is a strong hindrance to our central vicinity as a community to have so many dormant buildings, mm -hmm. of which this, this has currently been dormant as was shared for a number of recent years. In an ideal scenario, I would love to see immediately south on Pike, there's currently vacant land. And, uh, you know, I imagine I can remember it's been that way for at least 20 plus years that on Woodward Avenue, adjacent to our downtown, that we have either vacant land or vacant uh, buildings. Um, so I'm looking at this question through that lens of what's going to stimulate progress, what's a good use, um, I don't have it, initial concerns about sort of an auto service or auto uh, focused uh, facility there, um, but I look forward to learning more about the practical impact of volume, traffic, you know, how can they ac customers and uh, employees access and utilize the building. Um, those are, those will be central, but I think that there will probably have to be a special exemption permit however this site ultimately is used because of how unique it is and how essentially isolated it is um, being sandwiched between the, that major thoroughfare, Pike Street of Woodward, as well as Pike Street, as well as the, the rail uh, and the grade separation that comes from that. So I'll, I'll leave it at that and I look forward to the opportunity to potentially ask more questions. And Chair, Commissioner, if I could just add for process for the applicant with this, you guys are making a decision this evening on this uh, special exception uh, a permit request. 
If the decision is approved, um, it does allow the applicant to go through a site plan process, which is anticipated just to be a staff approval. Um, if it is denied, uh, the applicant would have an application, uh, uh, have an opportunity for an appeal to the ZBA. So I just wanted to present those opportunities to both you and the applicant and the public this evening. So, to ask a clarifying question to that, so if there was a motion, there are some recommended motions that have been shared with us. One could be approve, approve with conditions, or. Uh, to deny and so approve with conditions would that be an appropriate time for us to state we add the condition that that site plan approval comes to the Planning Commission so we can look at the, the nuances of the unique a very unique site that this truly is. You really have two options with conditions with this and it, it has to there has to be a nexus and a reason but uh, you know it, it makes sure that um, it follows that it doesn't impact negatively impact the neighborhood. So you can have specific conditions that we'd like to see, uh, maybe not in this case, but certain landscape screening or something that would allow this use, but you're allowed to go above and beyond what the zoning code normally uh, uh, permits. The other option is exactly what C uh, Commissioner McGinnis um, advocated, is you could uh, request that a site plan come back to Planning Commission um, for review. So I think I'll, most of my questions will be after the applicant presents. Um, I think it's a, it's a hard one for me because it, like Mike said, I'd love to see it develop. I also think that's the that's where we're about to, in theory, about to do the whole Woodward Boulevard. Um, when that happens, I don't know, but it's it's a key property. Um, my concern would be not wanting to see a bunch of cars sitting outside, right? Like so, I don't I haven't heard from the applicant yet. But that would be the disadvantage, and I don't know how to screen those. The collision shops that I can think of that are clean and fresh looking have a whole back area, and I don't see the area for that. Um, the good news is you don't have neighbors next to you, so you're not really, I don't think you're causing any issues for the neighbors, but I think that it's such a key location for coming through and seeing the downtown. That would be, that would be my only concern, but I'd like to hear from the applicant before I go much further on that. Um, yeah, so my questions will also be after you present. Uh, I don't inherently have a problem with the proposed function of the property, more with the functionality of the site and if this is the right property for the proposed use. Okay. I'll save my questions for after. Uh, I, I do have a question. I remember this property being brought forward as a marijuana testing site. I believe that was about two or three years ago. And I believe it was actually approved for that use. Uh, now, um, I want to be clear, too, that, that are we speaking of the same building that was going to be used for, for, uh, as a proposed marijuana testing site? Is that now the collision center? Or is that actually larger? Please. The building itself is actually larger. Good afternoon, or good evening, Council. My name is CJ Bartless. Um, I'm uh, partners with Randy Yono. Um, Randy's out of town on business. Uh, he asked me to come up and uh, represent M1. I'm the owner of M1 Wheel and Tire, M1 Automotive, M1 Towing, M1 Auto Properties, and so on. Um, <clears throat> so. These two buildings, these this building in particular, they're both unique buildings, uh, both from a topography standpoint, um, with the train tracks that are elevated behind the building. There is a alley back there, which is uh, not large enough, I guess, to be considered a road. It's not on the the city map. Uh, it is not maintained by the city, the county, township whatsoever. Um, it's not large enough for emergency vehicles to pass through. Um, so there is property behind the building, per se, and uh, the address in question is the one with the windows out front. Uh, the testing facility, I believe, was a different address, and I'm not certain about that because I wasn't involved in it. Um, as far as the parking goes, that piece of parking there is quite large. I actually, uh, in 
in possession of the building next door, 50444 Woodward, um, which is the corner of Lawrence and Pike, or Lawrence and Woodward. So our buildings were actually married in the middle with a common wall. Both were auto centers. Um, <clears throat> Jeff Mazza previously operated Mazza Auto Parts for as long as I can remember. Um, as a little kid being in the, in the community, my family, my, uh, has owned uh, several buildings and businesses in the community. Um, we own an employment service, so we've been directly involved in the community of, in the city of Pontiac for decades. Um, we're going on 50 years of business this year. I'm second generation in that, that company. Um, what we do is we are a staffing company. We employ several different, um, <coughs> different, uh, companies from factories all the way up to we deal with NASCAR down in North Carolina. So we're, we're pretty diverse in that. We've done the majority of our employment here in Metro Detroit and uh, in Pontiac. Um, so this area is, like you said, very unique. And uh, the parking, in my opinion, would not be a, a concern because there is quite a bit of parking available between those lots that are connected. Um, <clears throat> as far as vehicles, we do not keep smashed or damaged vehicles outdoors. Those are all inside that property. That particular address alone is almost 8,000 square feet. Typical collision center is between two and 4,000 square feet. Uh, that unit has plenty of room to keep the vehicles indoors uh, where they would be worked on. And uh, as I previously stated, both of those properties, both Jeff Mazza's property and uh, Michael Goldman's property, which used to be A1 truck parts, have been solely auto-based businesses for decades, uh, closer to 50 years. And before that, uh, the 50444 building was a machine shop that was machining blocks for the auto industry. So both those properties are pretty dedicated automotive there. Chair, may I ask a clarifying question of the applicant or uh, um, just to, for the record, I think to help in your deliberations. Um, and I just wanna make sure I'm understanding you correctly. Are, is some of the business model for this that some of the, park, uh, the outside parking would be on the adjacent lot to the north of, the, of this existing site? Yes, yeah, so the existing site has two parking lots on either side of that main part of the building with the windows. Okay. So between those two parking lots on both sides of this address here, uh, there are, uh, let's see, four, five, six, roughly six easy in, easy out spaces on this corner here, on the north corner, and probably the same on the south side, <clears throat> as that side is not in use. Yeah. So um, you're talking six, you know, 12 to 16 parking spaces just there, along with an additional um, six spaces at the south end of 50444, the white building right okay. there. And I, I do want to share that that is not in the application materials itself, um, you know, and obviously we can Correct. work with the applicant for offsite parking spaces. Um, I appreciate sharing that information. Mm -hmm. So we've all there. Uh, there's also a secured lease with uh, Joe Jacobs property to the would be the west of Viaduct there as well, which is a secured fenced parking uh, lot back there. Um, so, uh, if I may, then the, the, the marijuana testing site is gone, no longer uh, being again, under I, consideration. Sir, I, I'm not certain as far as that goes. I believe okay. that's a separate Good. address. I'm not involved in any of that. Well, it was the same address. It was the same place. Okay. I, I believe that building okay. itself so, has multiple ad addresses, so that's... Okay. Uh, sure. And <clears throat> the... Uh, parking area you're referring to to the west, that's on the other side of the railroad tracks? 
Yeah, there's another parking lot that's under contract. What on used the to west be side. the uh, old Salvation Army? Uh, no, I believe it's a that parking lot's adjacent to the Salvation Army. Salvation Army is now owned by someone else. Okay. We were not able to close on that property. Okay, and so that property, is there something you could point out where your additional parking uh, will be? There's no communication uh, north through dead ends into that railroad track, eh? Pardon me? Uh, uh, Lawrence dead ends into the... On both sides, yeah. Yes. So Lawrence dead ends into the railroad track between Goodyear and my building. And then it's a very maybe, maybe nine foot wide between the building and the wall. For the sake of those watching at home, if you could use the microphone. Pardon me? You're good. Sorry. Uh, maybe nine feet between the building and the wall, uh, back behind the buildings. It's, it's a very unique shape. It's like it had been added on to multiple times throughout the years, back in the 50s. Um, so the building kind of starts to jog down that alley, and that alley's not on the city plan. Um, and Lawrence Street there is also a dead end. So that you really can't go anywhere between Pike and Lawrence and those buildings who are, that are married in the middle. And if I may, do you own both properties all the way to Lawrence? Uh, no, I'm on the north side. Okay, you're, okay but I mean, this, so this property is on the south side. That, on yep, on the south side, yes. And you don't have any ownership of the building on the north side, correct? The big white building there? The white building, yes, that's my building. That is your building. Okay, yes. so you have all of, in theory, all of the property. Correct. From Pike to Lawrence. From Lawrence south to this building, yes. Okay. Yep. There's uh, internal the vehicle control. storage noted on the plans. Do you know the approximate square footage of that storage area? This this building here, 70, the total building Just square. the storage area. So cars. that that storage area is that area, okay. the, the the proposed area. So any vehicle coming in will have its own space. A lot of what we do already is higher end restoration things like that. We deal with oh, we have a large customer base at the M1 concourse down the road, um, and a lot of it is mainly restoration. Um, we just we build a lot of higher end vehicles, um, a lot of race cars. So that's mainly what this business focus would be. <coughs> um, what will you uh, do to the outside of the building? What's the facade so gonna look like? We've already been in discussion. Uh, Randy and I had a meeting just before he left for out of town. Uh, we're going to take the front face facade and off the whole building, both of them together, and reside both buildings to match to be one uniform property. Um, long term, what we would like to do is remove those windows from the front there, put full length eight foot glass windows in around the whole perimeter. That would be a lobby showroom, you know, that sort of thing where we would display different parts. Um, wheels, tires, things like that, wheel sets, um, different automotive type parts in that front lobby. Um, our design is to have a kind of coffee bar and, you know, amenities for customers when they're in our building. Okay, so there's going to be a showroom. You're going to have a full showroom. Yep. And then any cars that are damaged are either going inside or they're going into that back lot. Yeah, cars correct? cars will not be damaged be vehicles will not be visible from Woodward okay. unless they're being dropped off. And it's a matter of one of our trucks pulling up, dropping them, us 
figuring out the logistics of getting it into the building, into its space, and that would either be picked up by, by one of the high-lows, brought in and set in its place, or the tow truck would be dropping the vehicle right inside the building. So correct me if I'm misunderstanding this, but it seems like the secondary parking facilities are pretty isolated from the, the main showroom business proposed building. Uh, so from that bottom picture there, you have the primary entrance to the building for customers, the primary entrance into the building for cars coming in and out of the auto shop, mm -hmm. and you have the primary parking for that building all in that little like 12, 1500 square foot asphalt, asphalt pad. Um, I guess, is there any other modifications you plan on making to the building to kind of ease the congestion in that area? So there's two entrances to the that portion of the building there, one on the north, one on the south. Okay. Um, there is that one bay door that you see in the bottom photo. Our plan is to add two to three more bay doors there for access, um, <clears throat> along with the bay on the side. So basically, those parking lots, once construction is underway, all the buildings are redone, the whole thing is going to be completely repaved from Lawrence Street to Pike Street, both buildings. Will be completely torn out, new asphalt through the whole thing, resided, re windows, doors, Everything will be as if it were a new building, only revamping the older buildings, basically. So the, the parking is not as ideal as we would love it to be, of course, but it's what we have. It's accessible. We get semi-trucks in and out of there without a problem, 53-foot semis, in and out. Um, so if a semi-truck can pull in and move around and come in and out is a tow truck has no issue and accessing either side that tow truck can pull right in right across and back right in without having to turn around in the road or or do any of that kind of stuff i can i can pull my truck and trailer with my boat into that parking lot turn and back into the building without obstructing woodward so we know where your boat is hiding. <laughs> it's my kid's boat. <laughs> I, je I jest. I apologize. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. We, we, I have questions. Yeah. So for the applicant, what would Pontiac residents be seeing in terms of, would it be called M1 Auto Clinic? Uh, yeah. M1 Auto, I believe, M1 Auto Center or Clinic okay. is the name. And what would be your ideal time frame? Oh, ideally? Spring, start, begin construction as soon as possible, April, March, April. And how long would it be the realistic duration of construction? Six months. There's not a, a lot of construction that needs to take place. It's really going to come down to how fast we can get the material. Are yourself and your fellow applicant committed to uh, a strong and high caliber aesthetic exterior for the site and the intended use of the site. That's my main goal. I want it to look like the place. You're not going to bring your car or have your car towed to some place that looks like it's a fallen down building. I want it to be the nicest auto facility on Woodward. That's my goal. So that starts from the outside in. That concludes my questions for the applicant. OK. Well, Chair, if I may just add, um, th and again, tonight's the first time I'm hearing about some of the off-site parking. And this is not unusual for land use to have that. 
Um, I, I just want to express my concern a little bit that tonight's application is only for the special exception for this property. Um, I know some of the other properties you mentioned are also C3, and I would need to make an evaluation, possibly with an attorney, just to see, um, you know, would that have to go through a similar process as well? Um, again, want to be supportive, you know, to the extent possible, um, just within our regulations as well. So, and I think we would address that a little more hands-on for the site plan process. So, absolutely. Thank you. With that, I'll open up the public hearing. Uh, this is a public hearing for a special exception request at 50601 Woodward Avenue. Public hearing is now open. At 7.18 p.m. Okay. All those wishing to make a comment, please step forward to the mic. Uh, state your name, your address. And we allow you three minutes, and we will take your questions at the uh, at the end. And if you can reset that, okay. Thank you. Again, Norman Elam, four five two five eight uh, Woodward Avenue. Uh, the place that he's uh, talking about, I've been there and supported the uh, businesses that were there when it was a Napa, A one Auto Parts, and the like. Uh, going there has always been a problem with parking, you know. Uh, I, don't, I don't see how that enhances the master plan. Now, don't get me wrong, it needs to be developed, but I don't see how it enhances the master plan for the city of Pontiac and for the downtown area. Uh, I think it was on Huron Street at the old uh, Oakland Press, they had uh, vintage cars and nice, and that was nice, you know. There wasn't any, any cars, it was a showroom, which was nice, I think it had self, uh, since moved or left the area. But if it was something like that, that's nice, and that, that was nice, but for this, and it's an awkward shape situation here the parking, and I know we can say uh, it won't be this and it won't be that. You won't have uh, any blight per se, but uh, wrecked cars or coming in to be repaired, you know, if they're really doing a lot of business, it could be bad site for what we're trying to do in the downtown Woodward area. So that would be my concern. Tell me that it's going to be nice, fine, when you get your permit and things like that, or to go ahead to do it, it don't be what you project it to be. That would be my concern. If there's a monitoring system in place to make sure it's done, kept up and maintained, then that's something different. But it does need to be developed uh, before a auto place body shop. I don't see it being that at this time. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay. I'm now going to go back to our fellow commissioners. Can you close the public hearing, please? Okay. So, with that, we'll close the public hearing. The time is 7.21 p.m. We'll go back to our fellow commissioners. Well, in, in terms of deliberating, I think that um, if we are to approve it, I'd want to um, put the condition of approval that the site plan um, comes before the planning commission. Um, I think that's a necessity, so that way we can ensure it's as uh, tight and as comprehensive as possible of which I'm sure staff site plan review happens, but so that way we have the opportunity for the community um, to ensure that the standards uh, are met. My question for staff, though, is is that a, a pertinent time or a viable time for us to add those additional items, or would it really be at the approval of the special exception permit? Like if we require additional um, facade requirements because of the unique nature of this 
site that rises to the level of needing a special exemption, it also needs that special conditions, if you will, yeah. because of the unique nature of it. Don't get me wrong that there, that's a great, wonderful question. And, and really, this special exception allows Planning Commission to add re regulations that are above and beyond what our current zoning code goes through. And while when you look at architecture, landscaping, site design, you're pro providing critical feedback, you're really working within the bounds of what our landscape requirements are, our lighting requirements, our architectural requirements. So for the special exception, this is your opportunity to go above and beyond if you wished to vote approval this evening, so. And a relevant related question when it comes to explicit intent or impact that we can have on parking. Is there anything in the confines of our current zoning that, that really already governs that? So that way yeah. it's about, um, you know, are, is it all left to chance about, um, you know, clunkers with their smashed front ends overnight or for weeks or months yeah. plopped there? I mean, that might be a, a code enforcement matter, but you know what I'm getting at? Like, wh what's the appropriate process to be able to have those safeguards in place for the, the end use would we be foregoing that opportunity once the special exemption permit approval cat's out of the bag? Yeah, I have two answers. And I think the one thing from a staff level is what's been described to me from Mr. Yono was that a lot of the parking was taking place on site. And so um, I really, while we give allowance for parking off site, um, this is more than 50% of the parking. I'm not sure that that meets our even zoning requirements and I would need to review that a little further. And if we came back with a site plan um, to planning commission or at least a staff review, we'd be assessing all sites the parking, you know, would be there, um, really, even if with different parcel numbers. Um, my concern is that um, with this type of use, there's an industrial nature to it. And that's why there's a special exception in a C3. And, you know, you, and you absolutely, I mean, this is designed for automobiles from the previous uses that are there. Um, but, and really it's at this time is really when you're making that assessment um, with vehicles. Um, you know, if it is aligned, we do have code enforcement regulations, but um, you know, if, I hope it never happens, but if there's ever, you know, a lot of damage maybe from an ice storm or something like that, you know, it's very possible that there might be a lot of outside vehicles until they can, they can repair it. Um, I don't know how much, and, and I'm asking this out loud, um, but I think, you know, we, a salvage yard is different than what is being proposed here. And I think um, a salvage yard has different rules and regulations for that land use. And I think that does give us a long-term uh, um, protection, uh, but that's not to say some of the vehicles, and, and in my past experience, some of the vehicles from an auto body shop um, either may take a while to get serviced, either based on capacity or, you know, sometimes the user's not being able to pay, you know, and, and uh, um, so that does come with the territory here. It's it, not to the level of a salvage yard, um, but that, that is a concern with this type of use in this zoning district, so. So those, those questions are more open-ended for us, you know, as a body and us as the city to determine you know, what's the right juncture to make some of these decisions and, and, and what's the best path forward. Um, I still would like to have a better sense of, of what that, you know, if the special exemption, uh, exception permit, special exception permit um, was granted, um, what would residents of Pontiac and neighbors uh, um, and passersby and prospective customers what would be, you know, ultimately what would we be getting? Um, because it's special. So we want to know, um, is it, is it uh, rise to the level of, of deserving of that special exception? I'll yield. Well, so I think I started out being completely against it, and I don't think I'm quite there, but I think you have to have contingencies, and I, I think there's two ways to look at this. It can either be a stunning site. I mean, I drive by it every day. Right? I hate looking at it. It's an ugly building. No offense. Um, but it, it, so it could either be stunning or it could be an eyesore like Mr. Young said. So I think there has to be contingencies. Like, and the other thing is if, if you sell this, you know, what's, the next, what's to keep the next guy from coming in and not having cars all over the place? So if, we, if, it, if it's being told to us right now that it's 
inside cars, then that gets put into an agreement if, if we're able to do that. So whoever follows, from what I just heard of his plan, that, that's the plan, but we don't have the enforcement otherwise. So um, I, I like, I think it makes sense. I mean, I like the idea of it. It sounds like it's going to be a high-end looking place, and I think that was my biggest concern, is this, this is going to be a dumpy, typical site when I think of cars all over the place. I think we all have that same feeling. But, so that's all I would say. Is it, what's that? Right, right, right. So, right. And, and that's the goal for all of us, right? I mean, you know, I, I literally look at that building every day, but I don't want to look at it with cars piled on top of each other outside either. And I think that's obviously not the intent. So I think that just has to be, and I don't know how it's done, I'm just saying, but it has to be written into some kind of agreement that has those contingencies and says this is the, this is the way it's going to be. And then going forward, it goes with the property. I would think, right, that is the thing, or the, whatever's written into it goes with the property. So he gets this thing done, sells it off to another group at a higher price, and then we don't have that power anymore. That would be the problem. Where would that group have that? Obviously, but we don't also know you very well, so, you know, but we have to, that's all we have to do is cover it so we're not, you know, all looking at an eyesore in five years from now. So. But I, I like I like what you propose. It sounds like it's higher end vehicles and it's a higher end location, and you don't want higher end vehicles coming into the location that looks like you know what so, so that would be those are those are my thoughts if we can put those into an agreement or not I don't know um, but we would want to see when you come back with your site plan we want to see something great the last thing we want to do is see something that's the opposite of what you vision kind of just explained to me is going to happen so. okay uh, I have, yeah I have a question for staff uh, can you clarify or confirm that the other properties in question that were discussed also need a special exception permit? The two properties that I believe were referenced tonight, one is in the downtown C2 district, um, and the other one is in the C3 district. I can confirm those zoning districts. I need to get a clear, this is a unique land use request, and I need to get a clarification. I do not have that answer this evening, so. Um, I got to agree with Tim here that I was coming in pretty much against it, but um, not don't feel as strongly anymore. I think that the plan site plan should become before the planning commission, and any necessary agreements with the city should also be made. Um, if it is the case that the other properties need a special exception permit, I would also like to include that getting those special exception permits also be a condition of the approval. Yes. Uh, you well, intend on using that so, as uh, parking for this business, correct? What, what I'll do is we can finish our comments and then allow you one more chance uh -huh. where you can step up to the mic and, and have your comments. And that way we don't go back and forth and have the audience miss our conversation. Thank you, sir. If I may, if I may chair, just to finish uh, Mr. Or Commissioner Henley's point, though, if a special exception is required for that use, it would be for that individual property, that other property. We would review them concurrently for a site plan because even though they're not connected, you're using them as one uh, business operation with the close proximity. Uh, and so um, we can review that after tonight's meeting. So thank you. Well, I too have uh, been through um, Napa and Mr. Mazza and the auto parts store, and I know it's been really a pain to park. Generally, I would come up uh, Pike and kind of ease over into the lot, park in front of the uh, store, run out and run in real quickly. You know, with a parts store, you know, auto parts store, and I think they did some light machining work, even Mazza did some light machining work in the back. That's one thing. Um, you, you have uh, orders that you can send people out to other locations. But when you get into whole vehicles, that can really get tricky. In fact, we can ask all of our automakers now who are trying to build new cars. And they have lots and lots and lots of cars waiting for chips or this or that or this or that. And, and when you, you're working with some of the collision, it's not that you're not working on the cars in a timely fashion. If you're doing like kind of the uh, normal collision work of day-to-day -day cars, uh, you're waiting for parts often. 
or, or maybe there's one more step in the process that has to happen. So you can't always go right in the door and right out the door. Now, I, I hear you are um, stating that this is not, that this is going to be a high end collision shop. Um, I, 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 don't know, I, I guess I'm with uh, Mr. Shepard that, uh, you know, if we're looking at all the cars being contained within just that facility, uh, the, you know, if, we, if we're having to speak to uh, remote facilities that you move cars in and out of, and we're now talking about additional um, uh, uh, rezoning or exceptions for outside storage, which is basically what we're talking about. Um, I, I think I think we're you know I think we're going down the wrong path. But if all of the cars, all of your vehicles, can be contained within that facility, and you can, I guess you can still stay make money in that in that manner because. When you have a car taking space, it takes the space, you know, and uh, you can't do anything else until that car gets out of the way. So um, I don't know what types of vehicles you're looking at. I know we have some very, very uh, exclusive facilities already in Pine Rock operating today with some very, very uh, nice vehicles. And if you're tapping into that market as part of the M1, then that's one thing. And I could see a exception uh, with the conditional storage of the vehicle inside uh, possibly working. So that would say that you probably would not have that, m that many cars parking in front of your facilities anyway. <laughs> because the, the, it's not going to be a large volume in and out like there might be in some other types of uh, shops. So having said all that, um, I guess we're at the point where we're entertaining a motion on a recommendation. I'd like to entertain that motion. All right, I might have forged some path forward. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve the special exception permit for 50606 Woodward Avenue for an auto collision and repair shop in the C3 zoning district with the following conditions of approval. Numero uno, site plan approval comes before the Planning Commission. Number two, mm -hmm. a facade, and I can repeat these, a facade improvement agreement that is approved by the City of Pontiac Planning Manager is entered into between the applicant and the city of Pontiac. Number three, subject vehicles are required to be stored in the interior of the property or at off-site properties. Number four, if in the event that any off-site property locations are utilized by this property for vehicular or other material storage, and it requires a special exception permit for the viability of that offsite property being utilized, that that special exception permit uh, be received prior to uh, the operation of this auto collision and repair shop. Do I entertain a second? Can I, can I ask a question? Uh, or can only if it's second, because if nobody cares second. that it dies. Second. OK, we have a second. Question. Oh, I see. OK, cool. Uh, I guess my question would be one and two that you just made, the facade and the, and the site plan, isn't that, wouldn't that be kind of lumped together? So. Um, well, the, need to have both. the rationale is that, one, we're saying procedurally it won't be a staff matter for site plan approval. It will have to come here. So it will be the gauntlet in a public setting where the community and the public can help shape and craft the final finished product, but also uh, us stern, steely-faced um, planners can help um, improve the, the outcome. But two, 
it's, it's a potentially innovative approach. It's that this facade improvement agreement would allow staff the flexibility to agree to work out and forge a, a sort of a, a compromise that allows it to go above and beyond just the limitations of what zoning or the, the sort of statute says we can do. And, and I want to hear Mr. Yandrick's feedback on that because I obviously didn't consult with him on coming up with this novel approach. We're basically, it, it doesn't make sense for try, us to try and hash that out tonight to say, okay, what about uh, shrubs? Are the shrubs tall enough? What about the, you know, like I want this angle. Like I want the ability for the staff to be able to go above and beyond to, so because it sounds like the applicant wants to go above and beyond that it gives us that method and that sort of feasible way that allows the time to make that mutually agreeable. It can be something that, but it, but uh, the, the planning manager has made a great point that if we just leave it to the site plan approval, we might be constricted with how much we can require um, with the aesthetics and the, 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 the site, the parking, the, all of the, you know, the finished product that the customers, the passers-by, us residents would see. And, and I welcome your feedback. Do you think that that's a dud or um, brazenly, wantonly illegal? Please. Yeah. And I, <laughs> think, I think an important thing is asking the applicant. But from my perspective, um, I think it's a good direction. Um, I'm a little concerned about an agreement. Uh, but I, I think any direction Planning Commission can give staff and the applicant to, to try to work towards. Obviously, a facade is working on the architecture of the building itself. Um, you know, at this point, there's a lot of different things that could be done with the use of an architect or creativity and whatnot. Um, and I, we want to make sure that it, it's something that is a condition of approval is enforceable. And so, you know, if, if at some point we don't come to an agreement, you know, what um, is there? And so anything that can then guide maybe what we're looking for. Uh, what I've, I've not usually seen an agreement between necessarily an applicant and the city planner, uh, but I, I've seen uh, conditions of approval where to the satisfaction of the city planner, you know, the applicant is providing, you know, X, Y, and Z. And, you know, if there's any way to provide some direction on the, where that can go, um, I think that would be important. What's nice about this is you have a lot of windows which give a different character than a uh, typical um, auto collision shop. As you can see up there, there are several garage doors, but maybe there's some opportunity with lights. Maybe there's some opportunity with additional recesses um, on the building. Uh, and when I say lights, I mean up lighting on the building uh, with recesses on the and other architectural features in lieu of just adding more windows or something like that that may enhance. I've, I've not spoken to the applicant about architecture of the building yet. Um, and obviously, I know on, on your behalf, I don't know if you'd be able to speak to that tonight, but I think uh, the goal of this condition is in the right direction, but I think as long as we can come to something the applicable, uh, the applicant is comfortable with, uh, would work. We don't want it to look like a collision shop. Yeah. Right? I mean, if it looks like a beautiful building and it happens to be a collision shop, I think that's the thought, maybe? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's what we want to see. When, and, and I think... Yeah, it's But it's a showroom. The, the, the other quick comment I have, if, if you don't mind, sure. Mark, um, is one problem I could see happening. It's what all of us have talked about: is the cars outside. And but I don't think there's any way that I think there should be a, maybe maybe a two space area for a time limit. Like if a car can be there for 48 hours or something that you know somebody drops a car off at 10 o'clock at night, we can't ticket them at. 11 o'clock at night, they need to have some way to have, and again, it can't go the other way either. It can't sit there for two weeks, but if there's a time limit on vehicles, I don't know if you have an idea on that, but, right, so so that would be my only thought is if somebody drops, now it can't, I don't know how you prevent something from being a disaster there, but if somebody has to drop a car off, it's got a, you know, a fender issue, um, that I don't want to put in the applicant into a situation where he's getting ticketed for something that is not really a real reason to ticket somebody sure. for. Uh, and you can add a condition maybe uh, along yeah. those lines to be able to specifically. And, and the that. applicant could suggest if there's yep. two spaces that could be used that could only be occupied for 40, I don't, I, 48 hours is just a number I'm, or a thing I'm making up, but just so it doesn't create conflict right away in this, if we're going to approve something, it should probably have that mm -hmm. kind of a life of flexibility too. 
Can you speak into the microphone, please? Thank you. Sorry. Uh, in theory, it won't be a public towing thing. It'll be my tow trucks are picking up specific vehicles and bringing them to our facility. And your tow trucks are inside the building or somewhere else outside? Somewhere else. Okay, cool. Yep. Oh, so, okay, so nobody else can randomly drop off a car. I mean, in sure. In theory, but sure. normally that's not the case. You're going to pick them up, drive it into the building. Yeah, I mean, if Reliable shows up and drops a car, yeah. you know, yeah. But what but do you think, like a two-day window at the yeah, most yeah, weekend? Yeah, I mean, it's, they're not sitting outside for more than that. Yeah. If they're going to be outside for longer than that, they're not in the right place. Or somebody's going to take the tires out. You don't want to leave stuff out there for too long anyway. Safety-wise, the customer's going to get stuff. Yeah, out. well, I mean, at that point, we'll be pretty well lit up. Yeah, we already have cameras. security cameras around the whole perimeter of the building. Okay. The only issue we really have is the alley. Um, yeah. That alley is yeah. not a great spot. Yeah. It's... Uh, my problem is the graffiti. I don't really care for it. Um, we have some issues with um, some drug addicts, you know, and homelessness back there. Um, Did you light I've, that area up and put cameras back there? Yeah. Well, there were lights back there, and they broke them out. Right. But that's kind of part of your... We have those Correct. Two where you have to redo the lights and put cameras back in to make sure that doesn't happen. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I think that there could be a, a mutual agreement with that, that little alley back there. I don't think I'm we sure need to we put that into this, but if I were you, I'd make sure you have that thing clean, secure, and right. So, I I would like that. That would be nice. I mean, I had a guy. We were fixing some stuff on the back. There's some leaks on the back of the building. We had a dump trailer back there, and we walk out there on a Friday afternoon, and there's someone sleeping inside the dump trailer. Uh, very intoxicated. Um, I ended up getting him in the truck. I went and got him some water. He needed water. Took him up to the um, the shelter on Baldwin. Uh, I reached out to a friend of mine that's, that works there, and we got him placement for the evening. But you know, it's it's a very common occurrence. What um, we've noticed is bright lights in alleys aren't nice to sleep with. I it's don't not, think you're it not mattered. To be the mean guy, you're just putting bright lights, and people tend to go other places. I don't That's think cool. it really mattered. But yeah, I mean, hopefully that would be a deterrent. But anyway, yeah, I don't know if we want to put anything like that in there. That's not really necessary. But but those are the only points that I was thinking. Like that, that makes sense to the rest of the uh, institution. Great. Thank you. Great. May I add to um, um, Councilmember McGinnis's point though about facades? Um, one building facade is one consideration planning commission may have. Um, if your conditions are trying to prevent vehicle storage um, on these two lots that are on the property. Um, you may want to consider some light landscaping requirements to the parking lot to really soften the facade. Um, you know, to you know, we're not trying to add a tropical jungle here, but it may. You know, this is a very paved lot, and you know, establishing that may be a good thing for the facade to take off the pressure from the high intense use. Typically, with vehicle inventory lots for car sales for industrial lots, for uh, collision places, you don't have a lot of landscaping because the trees sometimes can, you know, shed their leaves and branches fall on, on cars. You don't want that. But, you know, if this is only intended to be a temporary parking area, you know, it may be encouraged, you know, for the people that might be just sh uh, shortly dropping off their cars. So you can ask the applicant that, but it's just something for your consideration. Mr. Henry. Um, I... Uh, Again, having lived in this area for a while, I really have a problem even entertaining the uh, thought of off-site parking being associated with this operation. Uh, the gentleman has said that all the cars will be contained within the building. I'm willing to go with that. But in terms of putting it on that fourth condition, I think we're starting to bubble over into the surrounding neighborhoods in such a way that uh, I think we're going to be disrespectful to those neighborhoods and possibly injurious, injurious to those neighborhoods by having cars stored outside and then the necessary uh, fencing and other items that are taken. Because I, I, I'm just getting the sense that some of these cars will be very expensive, exotic one-off vehicles that I would be surprised if you do park them outside. I was more referring to uh, employee parking in an adjacent lot. Beg your pardon? I was more referring to employee parking employee in an adjacent parking. lot. Yeah, rather Ooh. to leave the front spaces open. Okay. Okay, that that might work with that uh, stipulation, but yeah. 
the vehicles to be worked on. We wouldn't be storing them out, out yeah. there now. Yeah, and and um, so I would I um, just you know I have a problem with number four, condition number four. I really have a problem with condition number four. Uh, I I am looking forward to that building, the uh, facade being reworked. As I mentioned earlier, it was once approved as a marijuana testing facility, and at that time, one of the deal breakers, at least for me was the fact that we were going to see some rework of that facade and that the uh, marijuana testing facility in itself was, would be a pretty quiet type of operation in and out. I believe that uh, the marijuana business itself has fallen off. Yes, yes. But I just give that for a background to say that, yes, I'm interested in, in something happening with that building to spruce up how it looks, to make it more inviting, especially with the anticipated rework that we have uh, occurring on wide track. Mm -hmm. But um, at the same time, uh, I don't want to see, you know, the, the vehicles parked outside. And I'm, I'm taking you at your word. Neither that, do I. I'm not in the business of be. light. And uh, would also uh, want to put that into the conditions. But for item number four, I would not be uh, acceptable for item number four about um, going with off-site uh, parking and that sort of thing as being part of this operation at this point in time. Yeah. If I may, that's not part of this anyway right now. Right? We're not approving another off-site lot. The challenge is that my motion for approval of one of the conditions, it, does, it bleeds into that. And so I am open to withdrawing this motion uh, if Commissioner Henley's up for withdrawing the second. And I can, based on this conversation, tidy it up um, to better reflect what the, the staff and fellow commissioners have offered. Great. Okay. So I withdraw my motion. Do you withdraw your second? I withdraw my second. All right. All right. Before so I make this next motion, here are my three points that I'm workshopping, rather than make it, second it, withdraw it again if we don't like it. So um, yeah, let's go ahead. Yeah, so it would be a motion to approve. Um, so these are the conditions that I'm contemplating. One, site plan consideration is required to come before the planning commission for approval. In other words, saying it's not left it because to your question, some site plans can just be handled at the staff level. They don't all come here. And, and uh, Mr. Yandrick, what's sort of the threshold that determines what staff versus, is it basically statutory or? It is, uh, most of it is statutory. There's a little interpretation, but it has to do with the amount of improvements going on, the amount of, the, of a building addition. Um, typically, the only stuff that has to go through for a site plan currently th with no improvements is if it, a medical marijuana, and that's by another another statute separate than the uh, zoning ordinance. So there could be circumstances yep. where it just it would come to the staff. So we're saying we're adding a higher threshold. It must, uh, as a condition of approval, it must come before the planning commission for approval. Two, uh, vehicles are prohibited from being stored outside the facility. So you know it's essentially codifying, and you know I'm using the phrase stored. Uh, staff to, administratively uh, can determine additional adjective on on top of vehicles, um, the vehicles being repaired. Uh, you know, yeah, I could say subject what vehicles. Those vehicles are that we yeah. want to limit, as opposed to a customer's vehicle or an employee's vehicle. Or an you know, employee's vehicle. Yeah, yeah, because the site plan will probably call out so many spaces for parking for employees anyway. And we can work through a site plan process. If there is an off-site parking agreement, you know, how many, you know, that would be codified and also recorded. And so, you know, if you wanted to allow, I think it's more employees. I don't know that you want customers parking off-site. It's usually atypical uh, for something of this nature, but um, you can incorporate that into the condition. So is it adequate if I say subject vehicles or should I say vehicles being worked on? Is that formal enough? <laughs> A client, uh, client vehicles, clients, client vehicles, client, client yep. vehicles. But yep. Yeah. Okay. Maybe uh, a stipulation for time: forty-eight hours, seventy-two hours being out outside. But seventy-two is a stretch. Yeah, I mean, stored. 
the, our condition would be stored and then staff administratively, you know, there might be a legal definition of what constitutes storage. I mean, like know. if I leave my truck out front and go out of town for a week and my truck's parked in the parking lot, that shouldn't be an issue, correct? You're not a client. It's subject vehicle owner. It, it, yeah, it's not being repaired. But is that enfor but is that enforceable? Do, do, would our code enforcement team know that we would not? Could he have a dent in his truck and we don't know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it is dead. <dentist. laughs> so we can codify, you know, a certain time limit for vehicles out there, but I, I think that that would be for any vehicle. I, I think 72, 96 hours is something that's a little bit more enforceable because it's a long enough time period that can be noticed by city staff. It, it covers a holiday weekend, things like that, um, just in case for emergencies. Do you f do you feel comfortable with that? Yeah, we don't work weekends at all. So Saturday, Sunday, holidays. We're, we're not present. But a customer may drop off a vehicle on the weekend if an emergency yeah, I mean, arises. Yeah, if, if an emergency yeah. arises, a customer drops a car Friday night, Saturday night, yep. I would say... No more than 72 hours. You know, business hours, I guess. Okay. The question to ask, yeah. And then the... Code enforcement. So <laughs> site plan, planning commission, client vehicles, making sure that they don't stay there for time immemorial. And then the third would be... Um, a pl plan for uh, exterior improvements, including facade, lighting, parking lot, landscaping, and aesthetic enhancements um, be I'm using my words very carefully um, be made to the satisfaction of the planning manager. Actually, if planning commission's reviewing it, um, you know, I, I think you may have the authority. Um, you know, really, um, I'm so that could be something that comes to us as part of yeah. the site plan. It's a full site plan approval. Yeah, and now that it, because you guys are, are authorizing yourself to review the site plan, you may have the, you can condition yourself to to look at that um, a little further. But would that give us that that maneuverability to then I believe so. have higher higher thresholds? Yep, because you're reviewing what I'm going to be working with the applicant on in, in, in the site plan application process. Well, I think to the applicant, the goal is to soften the property a little bit. Yeah. I mean, not to give up parking spaces, but if you can soften it with some space like this exterior without losing the old space, I think. Yeah, there's about. not a ton of space. The south side of the building has a row of U's, like Hicks I U's down the side of it, um, and a very small strip of grass but on the boulevard and on the building side. We, we welcome innovation. Um, we welcome the way in which it would accentuate your operations, I accentuate don't disagree. the site. And we, we, weren't, we aren't going to be absurd um, in saying that, of course. hey, parking already stinks here. Let's gobble up more of it um, and right. put an evergreen. And no, so w there, there are innovative ways. When we say landscaping, we, we use that in a broader, broader sense. Um, but that we're basically clocking exterior improvements broadly yep. with lighting, parking lot, facade, aesthetics, landscaping in Sign. the mix. Maybe signage, a yep. little landscaping around the sign, flagpole. If acceptable, I, I would enjoy a nice big American flag there on Woodward. That's just me. Well, as a very sidebar comment sarah chevrolet the dealership in southfield that has those massive flags yep, there i'm told that they regret that because of how insanely massive and rare it is to find flags of that sort so be careful what you commit yourself to <laughs> i'm already pot committed with that one okay so um, i know where to get them i know how to oh, maintain them touche so we're good so how do the commissioners feel about that one two three punch we don't need number three now right well, the three, it's its not going to say that the planning manager has to, it's, you know, he's got to sort of at the staff level satisfy it. We're clocking it as it's required, and it'll be coming to us as part of the site plan. Okay. Mm -hmm. So basically this higher threshold, they're going to be bringing okay. that as Fine. part of it. So we are essentially as part of the site plan okay. approving these exterior improvement plan. And yeah. those exterior improvements are to our satisfaction. That's right. Not we us, not the zoning. Okay. Well, yep. they'll have well, to meet the zoning done. ordinance. Uh, let's say it this way: it would be behoove the uh, the applicant to do all that they can do during this conversation to present a site plan 
that uh, after conversations with the planning manager and hearing our conversations here would be highly, he feels would be highly likely that we would approve it. So I think to, that's the best way of putting it. And to that question, the threshold, the sort of the bear it is that the zoning. Place. So we will meet that, and this gives us the opportunity right. to say it must e extend beyond that because of it being a special exception. So the staff has advised us that we do have that authority um, because we're adding it with this special exception permit as a condition for approval. This condition for approval is our unique additional sword that otherwise we would not have as it relates to that. Uh, it allows the committee to go above and beyond. Well, the planning manager, the uh, correct me, that I think our intent is correct. I'm not sure the verbiage, we can be that explicit in the verbiage. I think you can be. We can be? Yeah, you okay. can be. Yeah. Only okay. because it's a special exception. Okay. Yeah. Then and let's you know, do it. And then I think it's it. worded enough that I think you're looking for all those things, yeah. but it doesn't have to be all those things. I think it's just given direction to the applicant and, and to staff for when the site plan comes forward. So, um, you know, and I think that's where the creativity and innovation comes in. Uh, and just because there's pavement there doesn't mean it has to stay there. We'll work with you to make sure that there's proper parking, access, even turnaround in certain locations, but the whole rectangle square is not, a, is, is not paved potentially so got it and I'll work with you to see how we can get a flagpole in so <laughs> but I mean it, it's other places have been invoked along Woodward even on, along Huron where you know adaptive reuse essentially for the building where they've been able to make some really impressive really aesthetic impressive. improvements essentially just with paint or essentially just with you know how they are front facing and presenting I can think of Lori Co on the southbound Woodward um, you know, they've got that sort of unique metal sculpture mm -hmm. um, that's out there as well. But what they've done with the, the windows, the lighting, the paint, um, what otherwise would be sort of this mid-century um, frumpy single story, they've done a lot and it's enhanced the Woodward Corridor. And I have great hope and expectation that with these safeguards in place, um, regardless of the end use, we can, we can help the applicant move in that direction because that's what the community would want. Excellent. Do I just get it? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll entertain a motion. I've got a motion. Oh, great. <laughs> I make a motion to approve the special exception permit for 50606 Woodward Avenue for an auto collision and repair shop in the C3 zoning district with the following conditions of approval. One, site plan consideration must come before planning commission for approval. Two, Client vehicles are prohibited from being stored at the exterior of the property beyond 72 hours. Three, a plan for enhanced exterior improvements, including the facade, lighting, parking lot, landscaping, and other aesthetic improvements be considered, or be submitted for consideration by the planning commission, uh, before the planning commission by the applicant alongside the site plan. Did I do that okay? You did that well. Thank Support. God for the stenographer. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, I'll entertain any questions. Second, having been given. No question. Oh, my question. Was the uh, was there mention of a special exception permit in that motion? No, I did not. The initial motion I made previously. Um, oh, I, I started it with it, but I didn't add a special any special exception permit. Anything about offsite parking or anything like that. Yeah, I, I didn't know if you made a motion to approve. A special exception permit? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I don't know. Something went on the on my brain there for a second. Was there a second with that motion, by the yes. way? Yes. Okay. 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 Any other questions? Comments? No. Nope. Okay. I uh, will take a vote. Okay. Henley. Yes to approve. North Cross. Yes to approve. Sh uh, Commissioner Shepard. Yes to approve. Commissioner McGinnis. Yes to approve. Okay. Okay. 4-0.
Give me Thank just you, a sir. second to load the next slide, and then I'll work with the applicant to, to get through the next process. Um, it is likely going to be April 4th. We'll get you in on the site plan if you're able to, to be, submit the requirements. Very well. Thank you, Council. Thank Great. you. Good luck. luck. Okay. We're going to take a five-minute break uh, with the approval of uh, my fellow commissioners. No objection. No objection. Five-minute break. Is there anyone here to represent the 122 North Johnson? I don't, it doesn't appear to be the case. So what happens at that? Okay, I'm looking to call the plan in vote. Here, I'll tap. 
Reconvening our meeting at uh, 807. Mm -hmm. It was 8 o'clock when we went to recess. And make a note that we recess at 8 o'clock and we're reconvening at 807. For the record. Now, another public hearing. This one is for 122 Johnson Road. This is also a special exec. Reconvening <laughs> at 8.07. We broke at uh, 8 o'clock. We're now back to hearings, public hearings. This is for 122 Johnson Road, a special exception request. Application number SEP 23-001. And I'll ask our staff to make their presentation. Okay. Planning manager. Good evening again. I have a brief presentation. We have a, just a second here. We have a special exception application, uh, SEP 23001. It's a 122 North Johnson Road in Pontiac. The applicant is the owner of the property, Kim Young, and the proposed use is a three or four multifamily uh, residential complex. And this is a manor house um, for this zoning district. I'll get into some pictures in just a second. So, um, and it, it's a request for no changes to the building, but to make it um, currently three or four units. So the property um, on 122 North Johnson has been approved previously for two units, which aligns with the zoning district. Uh, the applicant went through a remodel in 2019 uh, and, and I believe got approval from the city for some improvements to the site. Now, as part of this, uh, the building application and code team has established that there are three units here. There's actually potential of a fourth, but at this time, I think it's just for three units. Um, so that the applicant applied for a four unit manor style uh, apartment for this site. Um, this is the site plan that is listed in the, in the packet. North Johnson is on the left. You can see the main house and then there's a driveway to the garage in the back uh, where there is parking for the individuals that, that live at the site. Um, this is just highlighting some of the building elevations. These, these should be in your packet. Um, just showing what the building looks like. Again, no changes are being made with this exception. It's more interior work of what is established as a unit uh, having to do with doors and separation uh, between different parts of the building. So there are multiple entrances in the front and the back. So, um, and this is the current view along North Johnson Road, just looking at the site. I believe this uh, photo was taken at the end of 2021, um, but just identifying what the house looks like. A manor house, if you don't know, is an apartment complex or apartment unit that looks like a single family residential home. So um, we differentiate that between apartment buildings and manor houses in our code. And so this would constitute as a manor home. Um, I've, I won't go through this, but I, as I mentioned earlier, the special exception permit just allows uh, planning commission to review the characteristics of the site to see if it fits into the surrounding uh, environment. Um, in this case. And there are four standards of approval for a special exception. Is it harmonious with this, the Pontiac master plan? Is the proposed use and appearance of the site harmonious with existing and intended character of the general vicinity? Uh, the proposed use shall not change the essential character of the area. And it, does the proposed use, is it hazardous or disturbing to existing or future uses on the same general vicinity with a substantial improvement to the community as a whole? Uh, the manor house, again, keeps to make the structure appear as a single family residential home. The zoning district is designed only for two units. Um, the, if you look in the analysis, the proposed use will establish a housing density that is greater than what is permitted in the zoning ordinance and is greater than how the surrounding area is characterized with R1 and R2 properties. So a single family and, and two family uh, properties. So this change to the character of the area does not inherently imply an adverse effect but it is unwarranted change nonetheless. So a special exception use permit is not appropriate for the proposed development. Uh, for the proposed use to be permissible, the applicant would need to request that this be cited to be rezoned R3, a multifamily dwelling district. Staff is recommending denial of the application. Um, I do wanna share alongside of this, the applicant uh, was in some deep discussions with several members of the community development department about what the next steps were. Um, it was advocated to her at that time, despite this denial, 
uh, re denied recommendation that the special exception was a little bit more appropriate and that there would be a more challenging um, case for rezoning to R3 just based on the surrounding zoning districts and that this was request was for one little parcel in the middle of this neighborhood. So, um, and this is Johnson Street, while it's a light thoroughfare, not it does not have a lot of traffic compared to most thoroughfares in the city. So um, I did want to give some background information. Um, as part of uh, my staff report and agenda on Friday, I did email it to this to the applicant. I encouraged uh, her to contact me about to, to do, doing a setup for this meeting. Unfortunately, I have not heard from the applicant and uh, does not appear to be in the audience this evening. So, good. That is my staff report. Well, I'll again start to my far left, Mr. McGinnis. No immediate questions. Uh, no immediate questions. I really can't ask the applicant any questions. So. Just to clarify, this is proposed interior changes to the existing building, not an accessory build, not a new accessory building. That is correct. Yep. That's all I have. Yep. Uh, my question is, what are those changes? Will the resulting units uh, changes meet our our re our base requirements for space and other items? The, the large thing here is this, our zoning requirements for parking is you need to have 1.1 spaces per room. So the number of rooms is not changing here. It's, it's really a function of how the building is coordinated off for different tenants. And according to building and fire code, it is currently, it was not done with approval and she needs approval. But in order to get approval for building a fire, she needs a zoning approval, which would allow this use. Um, really, there would not be a substantial change. While she's, it's currently um, a non-conforming use. It's not. It's illegal. Um, you know, really, the change is just the fact that this is not increasing space. This is not increasing bedrooms, but it is separating out units for different tenants that are in the building. And she meets all other uh, requirements for that site. It's just obviously there's a little bit of a higher density because we look generally look at not for population. We look at the number of units per lot or uh, for a neighborhood overall. Hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong, I, I thought there were space requirements for bedrooms and that sort of thing. Yeah. And uh, are we saying that she does, that this property does not meet, well, let me put it this way. So we have no interior layout. We have no plans of what the interior looks like. Um, other than what's in the packet, if you want, to, and if you want to look a little further, you we can don't have it. any floor plans. I, I do not have any floor plans other than what was submitted, um, and there is some detail on those renderings that, that may help. Um, the The important thing about it, though, is that um, we do have minimum lot sizes, uh, and we do have a, min a minimum apartment areas, right. and I believe for three and even four units, this is a large enough house that meets those requirements for minimum, minimum area for units. Okay. And I, there are, it's not that there are three or four bathrooms in this thing. Um, there are shared bathrooms, which is permitted under the code. Um, so I, I, you know, that is one differentiation here. You have different units, but there are some shared facilities for kitchen and bathrooms in the, in the, in the building. Okay. Well, good. Uh, any other questions, comments? I do, I do want to point out, I had heard from a resident um, of Pontiac who's a property owner nearby mm -hmm. that the notice for the um, this public hearing, it said February 1st, which is today's date, but it said Monday, February 1st. So oh, she didn't okay. show me a copy. Um, she called me. But okay. so I gave her that updated and clarified information. But would it be possible if, if the will of this commission that we have a second round of a public hearing just to give, yeah. you know, sort of that re-note, re-notice, and that might have screwed up the yep. the applicant as well. I don't know. Yep, um, absolutely. If you'd like to table it to for a re-notice, that could absolutely is in order. So, I mean, we can hold the public hearing, you know, since, but I don't think there'll be any takers. Yeah. Um, but um, it might be, it might behoove us in our decision that we. If unless the applicant through their application expressed dire time sensitivity, did they? No. Okay. Um, so there were deadlines given to apply, um, but there, you know, on, being for the violations, but there was not a dire sensitivity to move forward. 
Um, and, and procedurally, if Planning Commission wants to table this and not have a public hearing, we would automatically re-notice the public hearing for next month. So if you don't open the public hearing, you don't need to, uh, um, it would be automatically re-noticed. Let me ask, let me say it this way. I, I would entertain a motion. Otherwise, I'll open up the public hearing and close it. Yeah. Entertain a motion. Okay. With that, uh, I'll just open up the public hearing. Uh, now opening the public hearing uh, on a special exception uh, request for 122 Johnson Road, SEP 23001. Public hearing is now open. And that occurred at, uh, what is that, 817? 817. Okay. All those who wish to address this commission, please step forward. State your name and your address. All those who wish to uh, address the commission on this matter, please step forward. Please state your name and your address. All those who wish to step forward, please step and address the commission. Please step forward and state your name and address. Hearing none, I declare this public hearing closed. I'm going to poll my fellow councilmen. Any comments, Mr. McGinnis? Any, any comments? Mr. Shepard? No comments until we get to the motion here. No comments. Okay. Uh, then entertain a motion. Our, our motion to deny has the wrong address on it here. Oh, 120. That one. Is that the email sign? Yeah, I didn't know if that's where you're at. Yeah, it's, mm. it says auto down in that address. You got a motion for us, Commissioner Shepard? Well, I don't know what people want to do. Do we want to approve? Do we want to deny? Do we want to approve uh, the condition? Should I just go ahead? So, well, what do you want? Or, or table? Or read your motion first, Jack. Or I make a on. motion to deny the special exception permit for 122 North Johnson Avenue for a three to four unit manor home in the R2 zoning district with, with in the R2 zoning district. Good job, too. Yeah. I second that. We have a second. Do we have any dis Yes. And if there's anything, Planning Commission can definitely dis uh, deliberate on this just one way or another on the, that would be wonderful, so. Okay. I welcome further staff feedback on, on your recommendation so that we can have further contact. Your recommendation is for? The recommendation uh, this evening is for denial uh, just based on the surrounding land uses uh, that are there, and this is a little bit more intense. Um, than what has been previously presented. Thank you for elevating that. I would like to deliberate on that point, that there is a great deal of density of, of housing on Johnson on both sides of this thoroughfare, um, property very close to one another, the parcels are very compact, and uh, the, the density there uh, primarily appears to be single family residential. Would that be what staff has deduced as well? Yep. I mean, there are some R2 properties that are adjacent to this. Uh, the homeowner actually lives in the adjacent, I'm sorry, the property owner lives in the adjacent home. Um, so there are some multi, there are some two family unit, uh, houses on that street. But other than that, there's a lot of single family residential homes. And so for that perspective, um, it, it, it appears incongruent with the existing um, property uses in this uh, concentrated subject area. That concludes my deliberation. But it sounds like Commissioner Henry has a point. Uh, I just want to point out that in the report that it also states that the building does not currently meet fire code um, and that giving a, a special exception permit would do nothing to remedy that. Excellent point. Thank you for elevating that. Mr. Shepard. Yes, I, I too share the same concerns that the uh, staff has brought up. Uh, and uh, yes, I don't see a special exception permit being um, appropriate at this time. 
for those reasons. Okay, that uh, takes care. Any any other questions? Hearing none, uh, we'll take a vote. I think we've had the motion. Yes, we we'll take a vote. No, to and that is uh, a no to deny. Uh, yes, uh, that's a yes to deny, but a no on the motion. Yes to deny. Correct. Yes to deny. I should have said yes to deny. Yes on the motion, which is to deny. So yes. <laughs> the motion passes four to nothing for the motion. And just for the record, I was I my intent was to deny the motion, so I should have uh, I, I meant to say yes to deny, as opposed to the no that I said. No meaning not to approve. Yes to deny. Okay, that brings us to old business, which is a site plan for 951 Vanguard Drive. And this is the Rise Commercial District, Jeremy Hayes. And we'll wait for the staff to make the presentation. Good evening, we have a uh, final site plan uh, before you this evening. Um, it is for the rise uh, development over on 951 Vanguard. Um, just some perspective, this is north of Elizabeth Lake Road and east of Telegraph Road um, in the MUD district. So the application number is PSPR 22007. Uh, the applicant is the PEA group. Uh, the proposed use is a business accelerator composed of offices, workspace, and work, work, workhouse, uh, and, the, and warehouse, I believe that is, and uh, it's a mixed-use district. And the applicant is requesting this evening a final site plan of the uh, approval of the development after receiving preliminary planning commission approval from April 9th, 2022. Now, not everything uh, that comes before planning commission and preliminary site plan does come back for final site plan, but this uh, statutorily is a large enough project that did require to come back. And I do wanna thank the applicants. Uh, they really have gone a long way. There have been a couple rounds, um, but I can, I can share with the other agencies that do the review um, that they've made some significant progress. So um, the two exhibits up here are just showing the site, um, which is uh, centered off of the cul-de-sac off of Vanguard Road. And then you see some single family residential homes that are being built from that mixed use development to the south. Um, this is the proposed site plan, uh, just, show, oh, excuse me, just showing um, some landscaping on the site, the overall layout um, having to do with the uh, storage units and the different office sites that are, are located in this area. Um, and the mixed-use district approval did allow for some compactness with this um, and some varying uses within that district itself. So I'll let the applicants speak to this a little more. Um, I do want to share... Um, uh, just so, some of the architectural renderings uh, for some of the uh, storage buildings and, and the, the site itself. There are three standards of approval for a final site plan. Number one, the proposed final site plan is consistent with the approved preliminary site plan in terms of building location, architecture, amount of quality of landscaping and site details, including but not limited to lighting, parking signs, and cir circulation layout. Number two, all conditions imposed during preliminary plan approval are met. Uh, three, the engineering requirements applicable at the final site, site plan approval are met. So um, at, the only issue that you may see within your staff report has to do um, with the, uh, the planning consultant really thought that there might be some concern. The parking is given on site, um, that, but the area between some of these buildings are really tight. And you know the possibility of people parking their cars next to their storage facility instead of parking the parking lot is a real possibility. But in further discussions with the uh, Waterford Township Fire Department, um, they have signed off and they're okay with the uh, layout as proposed. And 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 you know they're thankful for the other modifications that have been made to the site. So um, staff's recommendation on this is that uh, recommendation of approval of the final site plan with the following one condition. The applicant must receive necessary zoning, building, and other permits directly from each agency for the construction documents ahead. So um, with that, I'm going to cede the floor uh, to the applicant and uh, let me know if you have any questions. All right. 
if you'll please, please step forward, uh, the applicant, hear your comments. Please speak into the mic, state your name and your address. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Becky Klein uh, with PEA Group, address is 58105 Van Dyke in Washington Township, Michigan. Here on behalf of RISE Commercial District, um, as Mark said, that we are here for final site plan approval on a project that you know we've been working on with the city for over a year now, and I think we finally got, in, got it into a place where everyone is relatively happy with it. Um, the intention of this development is to enable small business owners a place to start and grow their businesses. So while uh, it does have the appearance of a self-storage facility, it will not operate like one. Um, the buildings that are closer to the roadway will have a, a facade that's architecturally pleasant. There will be a public parking area out front. The units towards the rear, away from the public view, will be, they will look more like an industrial building. And those units will typically be used by small businesses that don't have a public interface. You know, a, a plumber might store equipment in there and park his van at night um, or another business of that type. So uh, while there, the, the planner did mention there's some concern with having vehicles parked in there, by and large, there won't be a lot of vehicles parked in the interior of the uh, units over any length of time, possibly overnight or over the weekends, but you will not have a lot of traffic to the interior of the site parking. So it should not be a big issue for the fire department. I think that's why they came back and said they were, they were good with the the revised layout. Um, so yeah, I'm here to answer any questions regarding the site layout, civil elements, landscaping, and we have a gentleman here from RISE to talk about the business operation itself if you have any questions. We're gonna poll my commissioners for questions. I want to thank Ms. Klein uh, and the representative from RISE for being here uh, and investing the time tonight, but also for what you presented for the preliminary site plan uh, presentation that was very illuminating and very helpful. I reported that out to the entire Pontiac community as, and consulted with the city council person who represents this subject uh, area. and. Uh, I think it is uh, a benefit to the community overall. I think it will be a, an economic development asset. I'm grateful that for your first Michigan location, um, you have chosen Pontiac, Michigan. You have chosen very wisely. And uh, I think that this will be a very effective site uh, for many uh, local entrepreneurs and operators. I, I think that for those that our Pontiac residents or in the Pontiac vicinity, um, this is of great benefit. And I, I, my primary question is, if I am on in the Stonegate subdivision, I can't remember if that's Lydia Lane or, or, or Congoni, that if I am on that sort of um, residential street, um, the, the view that we're looking at now sort of cuts it off a little bit, but there are multiple um, single family residences that are existing and there are additional that are being constructed. So there seems to be a, based on my familiarity with the neighborhood and the topographical change, that there is earth, a berm of earth, as well as natural um, screening and landscaping. I just would like to get a sense of sort of the finished product of what, if any, is visible from you know street surface level to that um, residential street if they were looking northward um, at the at the area in question. Uh, yes, I can speak to that. So that is Arusha Drive back there that's parallel with the southern boundary of this property. And there is a very large berm there um, presently. And it has some landscaping on it already. Uh, so our development will actually be on the downhill side of that berm. And it is low enough that most of these building roofs will actually be at or below the crest of that berm. So you will have mostly a solid wall, wall of earth between you and uh, the visibility of our property if you're on Arusha Drive. If you're in one of the houses that gets built there on the north side of Arusha and you're on the second floor, you'd be able to see over the berm into the facility. But there will be substantial plantings uh, and trees that will be going in there along the top of that berm, which will help to screen it. 
And as they come into maturity, it'll be fairly opaque. Okay. Thank so it, it should not be an eyesore for the neighbors in any way. Thank you for that answer. Nothing further. Thank you. I, I liked what they brought last time, and this is just a, a nicer version of that. Um, since then, I've seen lots of demand for it, so I think we've got we've got a good plan. Everything I've heard, I mean, and I'm a I'm a landlord, a commercial landlord. I have people people are asking for. Sorry, I'm a commercial landlord too, and so people are asking for stuff with uh, bay doors all the time. So I think you got a good niche. Um, I think you did what you needed to do, and yeah, I'm I'm good. I don't have any more questions. I'm happy. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I wasn't here for the preliminary review, but I wish I was because it sounds. Very cool. Uh, I, everything I saw that was required to be changed from the preliminary review was addressed. And um, yeah, I guess, I mean, obviously these are construction level documents. Are they, are you already in process with getting the building permits and fire review official? We are, in fact, uh, I, we have basically all the site permits barring, we're finalizing the, um, the sanitary and the water main permits through Oakland WRC, but it, we're expecting those momentarily. Um, and uh, I, I don't know actually what's been submitted in terms of uh, building drawings for the building permits, mm. but we should be fairly close with They're those. In progress, yeah. They're in progress. Yeah. Just a procedural zoning and building permits, and, and usually in fire for that matter, are not usually um, submitted until after the site plan approval, just in case there's any conditions from Planning Commission that would need to amend the plans. So okay. well, that's all I have. Yep. And I want to thank the applicant uh, yeah. for bearing with me over the last two months. We did a lot of coordinated review between fire and engineering over the last couple of weeks. I know she was asking, are we on the agenda? Are we on the agenda? But they've checked all the boxes, and I just want to say good job for what you've done. Yep. So. And I want to commend you and your company and everyone involved for working with the neighborhood organizations, having a back and forth. I think you've set a model that we would do well to take with a number of other developments that we may have in the future, given the way that you were able to uh, have a, clearly articulate what you were going to do, uh, help the residents be able to visualize how that would affect them, making adjustments uh, given what the residents voiced as being concerns and reacting to them. Thank you. Thank you. I think that'll be an added addition to the a wonderful addition to that area. And I, and I, I echo what um, Mr. McGinnis, Mr. Shepard have also said, Mr. Henley, that yes, this, this is a step forward. I think it puts some good tools in place for uh, wanting and, and current entrepreneurs to grow and uh, keep their businesses going. So thank you. Thank you. That being said, I'll entertain a motion. Oh, uh, well, let me, let, let me go a little bit further. <laughs> Any comments, questions? I think I've expressed um, my sentiments, and I'm ready to move with a motion. Okay. okay. I'll entertain a motion, then. We don't need to open it up. Is that accurate? Uh, there is, uh, to the question being asked by Commissioner Shepard, um, there is no public hearing for this because the zoning's all kosher, the... the um, under old business. Under old business. Yep. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. I make a motion. Okay. To approve the final site plan for 951 Vanguard Drive with uh, one condition that the applicant receive must receive necessary zoning, building, and other permits directly from each agency for the construction documents. I'll support that. Was moved and seconded. Support it. Any questions? No questions. Okay. No questions. Shall we take a vote? Commissioner Morgenthau. Yes to approve. Commissioner McGinnis. Yes to approve. Commissioner Henley. Yes to approve. Commissioner uh, Shepard. Yes to approve. Good job, guys. Congratulations and thank you very much. We're very excited for what's to come. Thanks for waiting yes, so long. Yes. Okay, next we'll move on to new business, which we have none. Okay. Public comment. Uh, well, I do have a public comment, if I may. 
This is uh, more in the line of an announcement. This is for the Optimus Club's Chili Cook-Off, which will occur Saturday, March 4th at the VFW Hall, 1370. That is at 800 Cesar Chavez. Uh, this is a good time to hook up with old friends, meet new friends, and see who has the best chili in Pontiac. And I have tickets. Tickets are $15 a piece. That is my public announcement. I hope to see everyone come out on that Saturday, March 4th, for some good chili, good friendship, and who knows what else. <laughs> Any other uh, public comments? I have a public comment that's essentially an inquiry for staff. Has a, a consensus been reached on a special meeting for later this month, or schedule still being considered? Under staff communications, I'd be happy to speak oh, about that. I retract my <laughs> staff, my uh, public comment slash question, and look forward to that communication. Okay. Hey, hearing none, we move to staff communications. Okay. Um, thank you for uh, everything tonight. Um, obviously, this is the first time you've seen Dick Carlisle's work um, in just doing staff review, and I'm going to work with them to enhance um, some of the uh, some of the analysis, some of the reporting, as they're getting more involved in our code on a te on a temporary basis until we get staff involved. We have begun interviews, and I'm very excited to to continue that interview process to get a team uh, together. Um, I did do a polling. I did not hear back from every planning commission member, but I did hear from most today. Uh, while a quorum is reached, between the fact that there's barely a quorum and the fact that um, we, in talking with our legal counsel about our plan of action at a staff level to go from where we're at from last week's meeting to where we want to go for the, uh, for the ordinance and the associated documentation, such as the staff report, we need to make sure that our ordinance is, is ready and available to the public when that public hearing is noticed and, and if any uh, public notifications are made. And, and because of that, we have actually certain steps and game plans to work together for that. So for those two reasons, um, we are, uh, staff is going forward with the marijuana adult use zoning ordinance uh, before planning commission on March 1st. We are not um, holding a special meeting this month um, just based so we can make sure that what we bring together is a quality product that addresses the, I think, what has been discussed at, at the previous public hearing um, and also with city council and also addressing some of the conversations that city council has had. So um, there will be a public hearing on that uh, that evening. It will be advertised. And we, um, as I mentioned earlier, there we do have a very full agenda um, for March 1st. Um, the marijuana will likely be the first um, item on there, but um, we will, I'll work with the chair to uh, be able to get that uh, meeting in place and that meeting agenda in place uh, for, for things that are there. And for the applications we have received, um, at a staff level, we are reviewing the submittal requirements over the next day or two to certify, hey, this meets all the requirements to actually get on the agenda. Um, some of the items may come forward for actual a case and some of the items may be informational session. Uh, it dep some of these are depending on if they're meeting the requirements or not. If there's the need for six, seven conditions, then that's gonna go forward informational with our new process. But uh, if there's something going forward that looks like there's no conditions or it's a very minor condition, um, staff's gonna recommend that go forward for an actual case. And so I've explained that to the applicants that are going through that process. Um, I, with the idea that most applicants are coming forward informationally first and then 30 days later coming back um, for a site plan. Um, we do have several um, medical marijuana uh, businesses that are looking to go through the site plan process, and so um, that is expected to be on the docket for that March meeting as well. So um, with that, that is my report. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, question. You mentioned new process. Is there a flow chart for that process that we can view? That is being created. So thank you. And this is specifically for site plan. So nothing's being modified with other applications, but it's just to create a cohesive process, I think, for the applicant to make sure things move along quickly, but not too quickly that we get these very involved cases. We want to make it easy for planning commission and the applicant during these cases to be able to give you a, a full staff report even ahead of time and, and let's discuss the pertinent issues that are there. Um, and then give them enough time if any revisions need to be made and not give them like a week or two, you know, um, to give them enough time. But we are creating that. Um, and I think what's going forward is a, a little bit of a pilot for some of these initial applicants. So 
So all of the um, flow charts and process uh, diagrams we've had before about building uh, permit application process and all of them, those are still in place. Yep, those are still in place. Great. Yep. Great. Okay, just just this other process. Yep. Good. Any other comments? I think happy birthday to Council or uh, Council President McGinnis. So I'll say no it publicly. Yeah. <laughs> no singing necessary. Thank you. <laughs> Good at unsing. Okay. You don't want to hang up. Um, just for everyone's for everyone's reference, I will be gone on March first out of town. Um, I assume there's no procedure for getting coming in virtually. Uh, unfortunately, with state law, there's not anymore. So okay. if you want to watch, you're more than welcome to, uh, to watch Just on the city's Facebook part. account. But as a participant, um, there's not an opportunity at legally to my understanding. Okay. So and there will be quorum because I'm recused. So we have enough people. At, at this time, we have enough people. Yep. Famous last words. <laughs> yep. so. and, and on that point, thank you all for spending your time. It, it's literally necessary that the items of business would not have been able to be considered tonight if you didn't make the time. So thank you. Okay. Well, what's the old saying about the wheels uh, grinding slowly but grinding exceedingly fine? With that, uh, any other comments? Then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Support. Great. Meeting adjourned. I don't think we have to vote on that, do we? We all vote yes. Did we vote yes? We all yes. vote yes.